Hey everybody, this is Mr. Ainsworth, and we are going to get it started into uh, part two here in section 10.3 in modern math or discrete math. We're going to talk about what's called percent of change, all right? All right, so increase or decrease of a number expressed as a percent from the original value, okay? So what is the percent change when the number increases or decreases? All right, so let's check it out. Uh, it is done pretty simply by taking the new value divided by the original value minus 1, where 1 could be represented as 100%, let's say. All right, because new divided by original will give you a decimal, which we can convert to a percent. All right, and then we subtract 1 from it. If it's positive, if it's positive, it's an increase. If it's negative, it's a decrease, okay? So if you're not sure exactly what I'm talking about, Let's go for it. Okay, so you got to remember it's new divided by original minus one as a percent. All right, so there's our our main formula there. There's our key, and there's what we're going to apply. So here we go. Let's go for it. It's actually very very simple, especially if you are using a calculator, which I'm going to. So get your calculators out. All right, pause and play through the video with me. If you understand it, just go for it and work ahead. But always check your work. Okay. All right, so let's get started. We're going to take uh, we're going to take a look at what is the percent change. All right, from 25 to 28. Well, first of all, from 25 to 28, it's increasing, right? So it's an increase of three. Ooh. So the question is, you know, what percent change is that out of 25? All right, so let's figure that out. Well, we're going to take new value, 28, divided by 25, and we're going to we're going to subtract one and figure out what that is. So what is this? Well, let's figure it out. So 28 divided by 29, that's over one, right? Because 28 25 is one and three 25ths. 325ths, well, you know, that's 12 out of 100 or 12%. So I'm expecting an increase of 12%. So uh, let's figure that out. 28 divided by 25, that's 1 and uh, 1 and 1, let me see, 12 hundredths. Okay, 1.12. So 1.12, that's 112%, by the way. Uh, minus 1 or 100% gives you 12%. So when you subtract 1, you get 0.12. And guess what? That's positive. All right? This is equal to 12%. All right? It's an increase, I-N-C. All right? Increase. It's 12% increase, or the up arrow. Very, very simple. If the number gets bigger, it's increasing. But the question is, by what percent? Right? That's why we call this percent of change right here, okay? All right, next one. Number two, from 30 to 12 is a decrease. All right, a decrease of what? Well, 30 minus 12 is 18, so it's minus 18. So you take the new value, 12 divided by 30 minus 1. So minus 1. So what does that equal? So let's figure it out as we always do. 12 divided by 30. All right, that's a decimal, 0.4. All right, minus 1 or 100%, which is 0.6. All right, that's 60%, but it's negative. Look at that. Ooh, right there, right there, right there, right there. Okay, it's negative. So we got uh, 0.4 minus 1, which is at negative 0.6, or at negative 60%. All right, that's a called a decrease, DEC. All right, I have two, I have some very simple abbreviations. INC for increase, DEC for decrease or the down arrow or up arrow, okay? It's very, very simple. So it decreased by 60% from the original. So from 30 to 12 is a minus 18, which represents a 60% decrease from the original value. All right, and so from here, pause and play, okay? Work it out and then press play and check your work, okay? So go ahead and pause the video right now. All right, so I'm going to assume that you are ready. So we're going to take 25 divided by 18 and subtract 1. So what do we have? Well, we have 25 divided by 18, which is tough stuff. All right, you get that. Ooh, look at that right there. Uh, and then we got a minus 1. Okay. I don't know why I paused there. So minus 1. So we're going to have to round that, right? So it's 0.38 repeating right there at minus 1. Actually, no, wait, that's after I subtracted. Uh, yes. 
All right, so that's after I subtract it. So we just have to convert that to a percent. All right, you move the decimal over two places to the right, and it's 38.8 uh, bar percent. If you round up, it's 38.9 percent, all right? And it's positive, right? So it's, it represents an increase, all right? We're getting bigger from 18 to 25. Oh, you know what? I got that backwards. New is 18, original is 85. Oh, man, I switched it on myself. So it's, t so it's 18 divided by 25. I need to backtrack. Okay, you got to read carefully, which I did not. So I need to scratch this. Okay, so let's do that. Let's redo this here. This may happen to you, and thank God, you know, you know, uh, I'm human too. So we're going to change this. We're going to fix my mistake because I read uh, in incorrectly here because I was referring back to the original two problems. So the new one's 18. So here it's 18 divided by 25. So it's actually from original to new, it's a minus seven, right? It's a minus seven. So uh, it's getting smaller. So it would take 18 divided by 25 minus one. This should give us a negative number here. So I'm gonna redo this. So I'm gonna clear that. So 18 divided by 25. All right, look at that, it's a decimal, minus one, get negative 0.28. So 0.72 minus one is negative 0.28, which represents 28% decrease, all right? It's negative, all right? We'll decrease, got to spell that right too. There we go. All right, so from uh, 25 to 18, you're going down by seven. So that represents, that minus seven represents a 28% decrease, all right? So what you just learned from your instructor is that you got to read carefully because I made a major boo-boo. Got to read carefully. Read carefully, okay. Otherwise, you'd be a meatball like me. Okay, number four. Okay, I'm going to read it carefully now. So the original value is 13.7. The new one's 40.2. So it's going up, but by how much, right? So, you know, 40.2 minus 13.7. That's 26.5. So it's it's going up by 25, 26.5. But the question is, what percent is that? Represent from the original. So you take 40.2 divided by 13.7 minus 1. So 40.2 uh, divided by 13.7. You know, figure out what that is. It's uh, 2.93. You got to subtract 1 right here. And that's 1.934 roughly. So... 1.934, so that represents 193.4% rounded, okay? Increase, because it more than doubled, guys. Okay, it's more like tripled, okay? So it's an increase of almost 200%. If Thompson triples, you increase it by over almost 200%. Okay? Okay. Now, I'm number five. We start with 102 and go to 94, so that's a decrease. So right here, it's a decrease of what? Well, I don't know. Well, I do know, but you got to figure it out, right? So 102 minus uh, 94.86. So 94.86. Okay. So 7.14. So minus 7.14, you're decreasing. It's a decrease. So the question is, what does that represent from the initial amount, 102? So we take... Initial and final, so we take final minus, uh, divided by initial, so 94.86, better write that correctly here, 86, there we go. All right, divided by 102 minus 1. Okay, it's always new, well, this is the new now, okay, final is new, right? Original is the, you know, initial. Uh, divide the 2 minus 1, so what is that? So 94. Point Eight six. Oh, my cat! My computer's going crazy right now. Okay, divided by one hundred two. Okay, that gives me point nine three. We subtract one. Now we get point zero seven. So point nine three minus one gives you a negative point zero seven, and that it right there represents a seven percent decrease. All right, going down, people. Why? Because it goes from one hundred two to ninety four point eight six. Okay, and that's how it's done. You're just getting used to it here. You take the uh, the new value, or the end value, minus the original, or divided by the original, minus one. 
So here, 464.4 divided by 215 minus 1. What is that? Well, let's figure it out. 464.4 divided by 215. That's 2.16. Okay, because it more than doubled. All right. And then uh, you got to subtract 1, right? So you get 1.16. So 1.16 as a percentage is 116% increase. It goes up. Okay, you, st you started at 215 and you increased it. This is an increase. And that, my friends, is how it's done. All right, percent increase. All you have to do is remember this nice little formula right here. You take the new amount divided by the original minus 1 and you express it as a percent. All right, piece of cake. All right, so what is the part 3? Ooh, we're going to get in part 3 as well. All right, part 3. Let's handle some basic uh, percent increase and decrease problems. All right, we can, uh, you know, you can read these formulas right here, but let's apply them like we did before. Okay, in my first lesson in part one. So let's read the problem first and take a look at it. Okay, here we go. The value of a computer will depreciate. Depreciate means it goes down. That's an important word. Okay, depreciate 12% each year. All right. If the computer was bought for $800, what is the value of the computer next year? Okay, now if it's going down uh, by 12%, that's like a markdown, everybody. Depreciate, markdown. That's pretty much the same thing. You got to deduct it from 100. So well, the first thing we need to do is we need to take 100. Oops, should probably just do this in black. 100% minus 12% to figure out what the value is after a percent, 12% uh, depreci uh, depreciation or what's called a decrease uh, over time. So what is 100 minus 12 is 88. So the value of it is 88% after that one year and we got to calculate that so what we need to do is take 88 percent whoops 88 percent as a decimal that's 0.88 and you simply multiply so you take 88 percent of the original value 800 you saw me do this before in the markdown problems that's 0.88 times 800 because you lost 12 percent right so you got to deduct that from 100 and then what do you have? Well, let me see, 0 0.88 times 800, and it's worth $704 after one year. After one year, okay? So you just subtract 12% from 100 so to get the value after one year, because if it goes down 12% every year, then the value that remains is 88%. Okay, this is the remaining value. Okay, and that's basically how it's done. On uh, concert tickets, let's say they cost 45 bucks. And of course, you have to pay a sales tax of six and a quarter percent. All right, what's the total price? Well, listen, you have to pay all of 45 plus the sales tax. So you have to pay 100% of the 45 plus six and a quarter percent more. So since 100% plus 6 and a quarter percent is equal to 106 and a quarter percent. You have to pay all of that of 45, okay? More than just 45, 45 plus the sales tax. So what we need to do is we need to calculate 106.25% of 45. You've seen me do this in the prior lesson. So you convert it to a decimal. All right, so that's 1.0625 and multiply by 40. All right, just shift it left two places. And then simply use your calculator, right? 1.0625 times 45. And it'll give you what you have to pay. 45 plus a few bucks more. So it's 47.8125. So 47.8125. You know this is money, so we got to round it. So this is equal to $47.81. Uh, let's see here. Did I do this right? Let me double check here. 
Let me double check. Let me so one point zero six two five times forty five, forty seven point eight one two five. Okay, I think I did that right. Okay, number nine, a sweater is on sale. Ooh, it's on sale. So this is a 30% reduction or 35% reduction from the original price. So we don't no longer have to pay the entire 100% of the 38. Okay, the original price right here, it says the original price is 38. We don't have to pay 100% of that. We only have to pay 100 minus 35. We have to pay 65% of it because it's a reduction, it's on sale. So we have to calculate 65% of the 38. So mathematically, that looks like 0.65 times 38. But what's that? I don't know, let's figure it out, right? Like we always do. So we get 27, excuse me, 24.7. So since this is money here, 24.70, $24.70. And this is called the discounted price. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. Moving on. All right. So let's take a look at a population problem. So the population of 3,000 students decreased by 20%. Okay. It went down. All right. With the creation of a new high school, how many students will now populate the school? Well, if there's a 20% reduction, then 100 minus 20 uh, would be 80% remain, right? So what we need to do is calculate 80% of the 3,000. That's mathematically, that's 0.8 times 3,000. What is that? So we go 0.8 times 3,000. Well, it'd help if you put the numbers in, right? There we go. There we go. And you get 2,400. So 2,400 students remain. So this is equal to 2,400 students. All right. So if it's an increase, you add it to 100. If it's a decrease, you subtract it from 100. That's, that's the same as what I did in the previous lesson. On this one, number 11, a company predicts 15% increase in the production. Okay, increase from uh, 405,500 units with a new marketing campaign. So how many units will the company now produce? Okay, so uh, if there is a gain of 15%, so since... That's the case. 100 plus 15 is equal to 115 percent, right? So we need to calculate 115 percent of the uh, 405,500 units, which means we got to calculate 1.15 times that. So what is that? So let's figure that out too. So 1.15 times 405,500. So you get 466,325. Okay, units. Okay, of production. All right, so check the next one out. And hopefully, by the way, you're pausing and playing here because... Uh, you won't. You don't want to just sit here listening to me. You want to actually figure this out on your own. So you should be pausing and playing through the video here, you know, and not just let it roll. Okay, work with me. All right, try it and then check it, and try it and check it, and work with me. Pause and play. On number twelve, a new car was marked up. Marked up twenty twenty percent. The car is currently selling for fifty thousand. Okay, what's the original price? Okay, well, let's approach it like we did before. We take the original, all right, times the percentage. Now, it's been marked up. That means that we pay 120% of it, and that should be equal to the value that the company is selling the car for, all right, and it's selling for 50 grand. So we have to solve this problem right here. The original price, let's call it P, I don't know, call it P for price. Um... 
was increased 20%. So we have to calculate 125, 20% of that value, and it should be 50 grand. Okay. Well, as a decimal, 120% is 1.2. So we have to calculate 1.2 times P equals 50 grand. Well, how do you do that? Well, you divide both sides by 1.2. And we get P, the original price of the car, the original price. So let's calculate it. Let's take 50,000 divided by 1.2. Well, you got to press the buttons right. Oh, yeah, I didn't press them right. So you got to enter it in correctly. So let me do that now. Okay. And we get $41,666.67, rounding. So $41,666.67. You got to round the, the hundreds place, right? Right. Okay, number 13. The percent decrease is 22%. The new number is 93.6. Find the original number. We'll call that X. So the original number was decreased by, by 22%. So it was multiplied by 88.88 or 88% to get this new number, which is 93.6. All right, 100 minus 22 equals 88. So the number left over, the new number, is actually 88% of the original, which is 0.88. So when you solve this, you got to divide both sides by 0.88. And x should be equal to 93.6 divided by 0.88. All right, it should be bigger, right? Because if it decreases to 93.6, the original number better be bigger. And in this case, um, what am I saying? Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, boy. That's not 88. Uh, it's been a long day. It's 78. Sorry, guys. What am I doing? Let me fix this. So it's okay. I'm checking my work here. So we got to take 78% of that. So that's 0.78. So 78% of the original number equals 93.6. So I got to divide both sides by 0.78. So let me redo my calculations because I made a boo-boo. So 93.6. This happens sometimes when you're working too fast. You got to slow down and smell the roses. All right, you get 120. So the original number is 120. If it's decreased by 22%, you get a smaller number, 93.6. So this makes sense. Okay, last problem. Ralph Lauren is having a uh, sale on polo shirts for 17% off. Okay, that's a decrease right here of the original price, which is uh, unknown, right? The polo shirts are now being sold for $29.05. Okay, so... 100 minus 17, let's do this one right, is 83. So we have to pay 83% of that because it's marked off, right? So the original price, all right, we got to take 83% of it or 0.83, all right? That equals the new selling price. It's now being sold for $29.05. So whatever the new, the original price was, P, which is the, you know, the original price, it better be bigger than 29.05, right? So we divide by 0.83, and the original price, uh, what is that? Well, it's bigger, right? So 29.05 divided by 0.83, 35, which makes sense because it's been uh, it is put on sale, right? So if it's 17% off, the original and it gets to, and then it lowers down to 29.05, then it makes sense that the original price is higher than the sale price, which should be lower. Okay? That, my friends, is how it's done. Sorry for the mistakes, but guess what? I'm human, and I'm not going to redo this video. So, uh, but you saw your instructor check his mistakes, fix his mistakes, and go through the entire lesson. So, it's all good, okay, in my mind. All right. Now it's time to do this right here. So turn the page and you do your intro homework. Part one, part two, and guess what? Uh, ooh, there's no part three. How about that? Okay, part two includes part three. Part three is from four on. Okay, so this is part three right here. 
All right, so do your intro homework, parts one, two, and three, and I will see you in my next lesson on this right here when we talk about some geometric sequences and exponential growth situations. All right, remember this is a video here, so if you like and if you need to, you can start from the beginning if you like and uh, use your notes, obviously. Work through the homework, practice, get good, and I'll see you in my next lesson. This is Ainsworth. I'm out of here.